taking you through using a free online photo editing software called Pixlr. Uh, it's really simple and easy to access. So this is for students who maybe don't have mobile devices that they can use editing software on, but they do have access to a computer at home with an internet connection. You do need those last two things, computer and an internet connection. So to begin with, you need to go to the website pixlr.com. That's P-I-X-L-R.com. It looks like this. You'll see different buttons on the screen, such as all the marketing and pricing up the top there, but you don't need to worry about that. All you need to focus on is the button down here that says start editing. So if you click onto that, then it will take you into this screen here. If you've used this site before, then it will remember some of the histories, some of the stuff that you've previously done, um, which is why there's an image on here because it's uh, I was experimenting with it the other day. Um, and over here, we can start by um, selecting open image. And this is where you then you'll access all your files that you have on your computer. And then you can navigate to the file that you want to edit with. And then you can open that file and then start working with that file. Once your image is open in the software, it looks very similar to Photoshop. So depending on how experienced you are with using Photoshop, it does look quite similar. So we have um, a toolbar on the left-hand side of your screen here. And then on the right-hand side of your screen, you also have layers, the ability to add multiple layers. So you can build up images just like in Photoshop um, and the ability to work between those layers as well. So on the left-hand side, like I said, is your toolbar. And like in Photoshop, if you hover over anything, a little fly out will tell you what that thing is and give you a brief description of how that thing might work. So from here, we're going to start by showing you how to make some basic adjustments. So I've come to this um, adjust tab and then you'll see this open up here. This looks very similar to what you would have found in Photoshop, where we have a series of sliders, and those sliders affect different parts of our image um, and different elements that we can make changes to. As you scroll down this bar, you'll see there are other areas there as well, such as exposure and contrast, and they're really simple and easy to use. You simply just grab the circle on the slider and then move it around and you'll see the adjustments happen to your image in real time so you can make changes as you go. So when it comes to a lot of your basic editing processes like you would when you were in school, you're looking to change things in your images such as vibrancy, such as the exposure. Um, sometimes you may even look to change entire colors within your image. You may want to look to use curves adjustments if you understand how they work so you can um, control the areas um, of, of brightness um, at the same time as maintaining some of the other details and integrities of the image elsewhere. So to use those, as the description says underneath, I'm just simply double tapping on that curve line and then making that adjustment from there. There are toning options in here as well, so we can choose which colors we want to actually tone our image with. Um, and we can also make other adjustments in here as well. This is particularly um, interesting, actually, because this goes a step further than a Photoshop that we have in school. You can make adjustments to specific areas of your image, such as the highlights, which are the brighter areas. So you'll see there that that bright sky is affected while the rest of the image is relatively intact. Um, and then similarly with the shadows, we can affect those areas of shadow as well. Okay, so as we work through, you're making changes to your images. Make sure you're working in the style of your artist and make sure that any um, edits that you apply are reasonable. So you can do extreme edits, but that's not always necessary for the artist that you're taking inspiration from in your work. Um, we've also got a crop tool over here so we can apply crops to our image and you'll see the rule of thirds grid appear as we move that around and then we can um, then we can actually shift that crop box around on our image to place it where we want it to and then down here we have the blue apply button so we can apply that crop to our image if we want to from there. 
We've got a type tool in there. If you need to add text at all, we can add additional images to add additional layers. So just for fun, I'm going to add um, another one of those uh, images I had in the folder of images that are ready. So these are just a few photos that I brought together um, to demonstrate for you today. It doesn't matter. Um, I need to go find another one because I need to convert that one. It doesn't um, matter whether you're using a Mac or a, a desktop computer. They're all available for you to use um, at different times. So it's completely irrelevant, but it's one I've been caught off guard for. Um, so I'm going to add that to current. Um, it's just an image uh, from a wedding a while back and you'll see that I'll put that in your layers tab over here and then you can change whether it's visible just like in Photoshop and then these dots here we can then change the transparency or as you may know it opacity so we can change how that's uh, how clear that is see-through we also have the blend mode as well you'll recognize many of these from Photoshop if you've used them before so we have uh, they're called layer blending modes in Photoshop and they're essentially called the same thing here and they will do the same thing as well so they will affect how the different layers interact with other layers on your um, image and obviously that has varying results depending on what you're trying to achieve OK, um, so that's how we can create um, edits. And obviously, it's a very vast program. We do have a liquify here as well. We've got retouching, the ability to remove objects and the ability to add overlays um, and things like that. So it is quite actually a, an extensive software, which is free, entirely free. And as I said at the top of the video, you just need an Internet connection and a computer. So where we've made these adjustments already, um, if I just quickly go undo and we'll take all those back and then I'm going to make some other adjustments so I can show you. Can you see that? There we go. So we keep going back and back and back. So if I make some uh, quick adjustments just for your demonstration purposes here um, and then kind of bring those in a bit and let's put it in black and white again like we did before. Okay. And I want a bit more contrast here. So once we're happy with our changes, an important thing for documenting your work, as you uh, as you know, um, or as you know, if you're uh, year 10, 11 on GCSE, year 9 on Key Stage 3, you'll learn this gradually as well, is that we evidence what we've done. So we can document what we've done by taking screenshots. Now, on a Mac, that is very easy. You press Command, Shift, and 3. And that will take a picture of the whole screen ready for us to use in your work, however that is. Um, if you're on a Windows computer, then there is a print screen button which you can use, which you then need to paste into a Word document or a PowerPoint. You could paste it straight into your PowerPoint so that's how you're working. And then it's ready to evidence. When it's in your work, you're talking about what you have done, how you have done it and making connections to your artist as a result. How has your edit or what you've done to the image been inspired by the photographer or the artist that you looked at? And how has this affected the outcome of the image that you've created? Maybe you have a next step that you intend to do from here and what you're going to do from there. So here we've made some edits to an image. We've taken a screenshot so we can talk about what we did now we need to save our image or get it in a different position so we can actually keep it for, um, for safekeeping. So Pixlr being a free software, you can do this really quite simply by tapping the blue save button down the bottom and it will give you a variety of different options. You can choose the quality of the file that you save. You can choose the format. Just stick with JPEG. That's the best approach here. And you can also give it a file name. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call this um, edit one, where I've already got a file name. That way, I can distinguish that from another image. And then I can click download. And then that will download into my downloads folder so it's ready for me to use as an edited image. After we've edited an image and we've exported it, we then need to present it in our work. If you're working in a book, then this is quite straightforward. We print an original image and we present it next to the edited image. And we talk about, again, as I said, what we did, how we did it, 
and where the inspiration and influence came from from the artist. If you're working in a PowerPoint, it's the same process, but with less steps. You're just clicking and dragging, placing it into your PowerPoint. You have your original, you have your edited image, and then you have your description of what you did and how you did it, as I've explained um, as well during this video. So that's Pixlr. That's how you use it. Again, like I said before, it's entirely free. All you need is a computer and an internet access in order to do this. Thanks.